This 14th century drawing shows the king of Sicily, Henry of Germany, who is giving a lecture to his students in Bologna. The funny thing of this scene is that it rem reminded me of the fact that education did not change that much the last seven centuries. I've been born in Masbre, a village nearby Venlo, and after my primary education and my high school education, I went to university to study physics. And this scene is exactly what I experienced in the lecture room. First, the professor was the only person who was sweating. The professor was sending information to the students. The students were doing nothing. We were sitting or sometimes lying in the lecture room. We were passive. Most of the time, we were doing nothing. Now, 20 years later, I'm the associate professor and I'm the lecturer. And may I introduce you to my students during my lecture. One thing has changed. The students are now working. They are active during my lectures. One thing did not change. You can see me walking in the back of the lecture room. I'm still, most of the time, doing nothing. What happened here? Online education got introduced into on-campus education. And today, I would like to convince you that online education is a way to tackle a lot of challenges in education we're facing today. Let's focus on two global challenges. First of all, the world population is growing very fast. From currently 7 billion people to 10 billion people in 50 years. It means that we have to build a lot of new infrastructure to offer education to all those young people around the world. That's a big challenge. Secondly, a lot of students and people are facing financial barriers to have access to high-quality, higher education. Although Article 26 of the Human Rights tells us that on basis of merit, everybody, every student should have access to higher education, in the world today, this is unfortunately not the truth. So today, I would like to discuss with you my experiences I had in tackling such challenges. I'm going to talk about my massive open online course I created last year on solar energy. So what do I mean with massive open online course? Also, we call it a MOOC. Massive means that a lot of students participate in this course. Over 60,000 students participated in the first edition. Currently, I'm running an edition where 30,000 students are participating. So, massive means a lot. Open means it's free of charge. All the lectures, all the exercises, all the assignments, all the exams, the downloadable textbook, you can get it for free. Online means all the course is offered through the internet. And course means it's just the same course I'm teaching at the Delft University of Technology, solar energy, to the third year's bachelor students. So how does it look like? I'm not giving a lecture in a lecture room. I'm giving lectures in a TV studio. The lectures I usually give on campus are one and a half hour. These lectures are short video clips of six, ten minutes. This is because the average attention span of students is not longer than 10 minutes. So if I assume that the average attention span of the TEDx audience is the same, I have to be finished in five minutes. Uh, after these lectures, uh, we provide the students with exercises. Students can test their knowledge. 
And after every week, we put assignments and exams on this platform. These exams and assignments contribute to the final grade. If a student has a score of 58% or more, it means he is earning a certificate. Also very interesting is on the platform, you have these discussion forums, a very important tool in MOOCs, because it, it enhances the interaction between the students. Massive, what does that mean? May I introduce you to some of my students who introduced themselves last September on an app within the platform. You see, I have many students. I think it's very cool that for somebody born in the Venlo region can reach out to so many students around the world. And you already see the power of online education. Yes, I can reach out to the students who don't have access to high quality education. I can reach out to students which don't have the money to pay for a decent education. And one of the advantages of these massive numbers of students is that you can also introduce new educational tools in your education. You have enough critical mass. I will give a few examples. The first example. A student is posting on the blog that he's already struggling for two hours with an exercise. He is unable to arrive at the correct answer. Within an hour, 10 other students react. And they help him to arrive to the correct solution of the problem. No interference of the teacher. Peer-to-peer -peer students are teaching students. That's very nice for me. I don't have to do anything. Second example. I asked the students, what is your opinion about solar energy? And what is your opinion about the future of solar energy and the important challenges? The first week, a lot of students start to discuss, thousands of them. Some have very good arguments, some have ridiculous myths. But the interesting thing is that all those myths are being filtered out. After two weeks, only the most important challenges are floating at the surface. So students are learning a lot in this discussion. And again, no interference of the teacher. I'm, not doing, I'm doing nothing, I'm just watching it. The critical mass also allows you to do some research. You can collect a lot of data. Some examples are, I asked them what is their opinion about the history of solar energy. You get so much input that you can write a book about the history of solar energy. I also asked the students, what is the quality of your energy supply where you are living? Uh, what is the cost? Uh, what are the number of sun hours per year at your location? And then I got a map with the potential of solar energy all around the world. It takes a person in Brussels more than one year to gather this data. We got it done in three hours. Another example, I asked the students, please send in your video or pictures of your own solar energy system, that of the neighbors, of, of your relatives, or whatever system is in your village and town. And this, again, resulted in the biggest database of pictures of solar energy systems installed in the entire world. Students are using it, companies are using it right now. All these examples. And of course, the most important thing is, what I realized is that the knowledge you provide, it also has impact on the living standards of a lot of people. For instance, example, this is Anderson, former student from Colombia. He only had five to six hours of electricity a day. With the knowledge I provided him, he was able to build his own solar energy system. And now he's 24 hours of electricity a day. And he's now working to help his people in his village to also get 24 hours of electricity a day. And then, personally, I realized again what the power of knowledge is, what the massive energy of knowledge is, and the massive power of education worldwide. Do we also have some critical points 
in online education? Yes, we have. Here you see the activity of students in an online course. So you see really suffering from dropouts. And the main reason that students are dropped out is lack of time. You have to realize that it takes six to eight hours a week to follow this course. And you have to do that next to your studies, next to your job. That's a big challenge. But to my opinion, you have to look at it from a different viewpoint. Four and a half thousand students got a certificate in the first two editions. If you consider that on campus every year 40 students are passing this course, it means I have achieved 115 years of education. That increased my efficiency enormously. In spite of this achievement, the dean does not allow me to retire yet. <laughs> so, in which direction are we going with this online education? Is this MOOC concept or online education, is that really sustainable? If you see at the number of MOOCs with, on the internet, they are at the moment exploding. So this fall, we already had six times more online courses than last year in the fall. So the number of students is not increasing that fast, so it means that the students per course is also dropping. So it means I'm losing exposure. But to my opinion, that is not really a problem, because to my opinion, if we have so much education online, the real revolution is starting in changing on-campus education. I will give you an example. So the classical way of teaching is students come to the university and they're watching my lecture. Then they go home, do their homework, which is usually problem solving. But you can also flip this around. Let's say now students at home are watching my lectures. And students come to the university to do their homework. Face to face, I'm solving the problems with the students. And what you see is the students are using their time far more efficiently. 70% of my students prefer this concept of this flipped classroom model. Only 12% of the students prefer the classical way of teaching. The passing rate of my exam went up from 65% to 85%. Imagine an industry, if you can increase the production yield with 20%, you would get a big bonus. So this is a tool how we can make education more efficient. But also quite important is, it's a tool which allows competition in education. I can also use a MOOC from an other professor and can use it in my education on campus with the same efficiency. Some other professors around the world can use my MOOC to do their education. So the MOOCs start to replace the textbooks. The MOOCs are the textbooks of the future. And of course, if you're teaching, you want to have the best textbook. It also means you want to have the best MOOC. And that means when outstanding becomes so easily ava available, average is over. And then going back to all the students which I had reach out. It means that with MOOCs, it's also very easy to improve the quality of education all around the world. Because everybody, everybody has a right on knowledge. And the funny thing of knowledge is that knowledge is the only thing that grows when you share it with other people. Thank you for your attention.